Hey guys, what's up? It's Danielle. So welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be doing a 2020 recap. You know, everything that's happened. And I will also be talking about my goals for 2021. So let me start just by saying I really hope that 2021 is a great year for us all. And also, I would just like to say that we made it, y'all. We made it. So, happy new year. And uh, it, it kind of feels nice to have, like, an end to this year, even though a lot of the, well, pretty much everything that's happened in 2020 is following us next year. But you know, it kind of feels like there's an end to it, if you get what I mean. So anyways, I'm going to try not to make this video too long, but I'm going to start with a recap of this year. There's quite a bit to go over. The first of which is I got a new job, which I told you guys about, but that was back in May. And would I recommend getting a new job in the middle of a global pandemic when there's also a recession? Absolutely. If you are not comfortable in your current position and you see that there's a better opportunity, I say go for it no matter what the circumstances are. And I, if I'm, if I'm being real, I'm not trying to flex or anything. I have nothing to flex about, but I work in a recession proof, apparently pandemic proof industry. And I am forever grateful for that. So that being said, just it was I didn't expect it to happen because nobody expected the pandemic to happen. But you know, it, it's just kind of how it played out. So I want to talk about why I felt the need to get a new job this year. Because I totally could have put it off further. But bottom line is that I felt like I was stagnating. I was not being challenged anymore. And I kind of felt like I kept questioning myself, like, why am I here? Why am I still here if I'm not being challenged? So that was part of it. Another part of it was something major that happened last year when I was in Houston. And I don't really want to discuss this, but I will mention it because I do think that it is worth mentioning. I was actually sexually assaulted last year and I'm trying not to cry right now, but I do have to admit that that was a large reason why I did leave that company was because of some of the backlash that I received, which technically it wasn't their fault, but it was rather the fault of the people that I was working with. So that was another large reason why. And I just couldn't really get past that. The other thing was when I was in Houston last year, I got a taste of a more chill work environment where I wasn't constantly stressed out. And apparently I was bound and determined to keep that mindset where it's like, Everything is chill. I don't have to be stressed out. I'm not having a panic attack twice a week. So I knew right then and there that I needed to find something, <clears throat> excuse me, that was on a more relaxed wavelength, if you will. And that was how I found my current job. So just a lot of different things, honestly. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now. And the job I have now presents different challenges. My old boss would always tell me that it's more challenging to grow in a position where you're stressed out all the time than it is to grow in one where, you know, it's a little bit more relaxed and laid back because that's when you can really show, you know, your who you are, your true colors, whatever. And it it just presents different challenges, if you will. So anyways, moving on. We all know by now, yes, I bought a condo. I love it to death. I named him Henry because I'm weird and I name everything. 
So his name is Henry and he was built in 1986. So yes, my condo is older than I am. And I've just been slowly fixing it up. You know, it wasn't in bad shape when I moved in because the previous owner did update a lot of different things. And I will be talking about that when I do a proper house tour that doesn't involve Christmas decor and you guys can see absolutely everything. But that was definitely a major milestone for me because I was convinced that I wasn't going to be able to buy a house till like I was 35. So <laughs> thanks to the pandemic partially, but also thanks to me. But yeah, it's, it's definitely been a lot of fun. It's also been extremely weird because it's like, you know how it is when you're with your parents and then you get so used to renting. And then once you have your own place, you're just like, wait, wait, I, I have to fix this stuff on my own. Like, what am I doing? Perfect example. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I did replace my garbage disposal by myself like what, two, three weeks ago now, which I have to say that is the easiest thing in the world. Don't ever be intimidated by that unless, well, I would say unless you don't even have one right now, because I don't even know how to do that, but I'm sure it can't be that difficult. If it's like basic plumbing, it's really not that difficult of a concept to grasp. In my opinion, toilets are easy. Sinks are easy. Apparently garbage disposals are also easy. So just throw that out there. In case anybody needs to know. All right, health. This has been a huge one. So at the beginning of this year, I was actually going through the process of getting gastric bypass. I did not get that surgery for three reasons. The first one is, and let me preface this by saying that when you go through the process of getting gastric bypass, they don't just give it to you. You don't just get to have the surgery. Depending on the insurance company, you have to spend a certain amount of time going through counseling, nutritional counseling with a dietitian. You also have to meet up with a bariatric doctor. So there's a lot involved in it. And my insurance company actually had me doing all of that. And I had to go to these information sessions. So it's just a lot of different things. You really have to show that you're committed and at the time, I was just so unsure. So the three reasons why I didn't get it. Number one was because the counselor or whatever the hell her title was, I told her because you have to, you know, tell them, you know, if you have depression, anxiety, like all that kind of stuff, anything regarding mental health. And I told her that I had binge eating disorder and I told her that I was afraid that if I got the surgery, I would still try to binge. And I'm not even kidding when I say this. This is what she said to me. Oh, well, you literally won't be able to because your stomach won't be able to hold that much food. And I was like, that's stupid. I was like, are you trying to tell me that we're not going to address this? Because it needs to be addressed. And I was like, on top of that, <clears throat> excuse me, on top of that, you know, it's, it's not like I'm still not going to try. Like my, my brain doesn't give a shit what size my stomach is. It's still going to try to eat. Like it doesn't make any sense. So I get where she was coming from, but that just rubbed me the wrong way. Another thing was a lot of the restrictions and Keep in mind, I was bulimic when I was younger. It developed into binge eating when I got older. Basically, when I was, you know, in college, that was when it started. And I am very used to restricting certain types of foods. And it's not something that I want to continue with because who the hell wants to live like that, honestly? So... The rules are like, you can't have anything super high in fat, which I don't care about that. But the thing that really made me think was the eating and the drinking. So you have to wait 15 minutes after you drink something in order to eat. 
And then if you have something to eat, you have to wait a half hour before you can drink anything. So you can never have liquids and solids at the same time. And honestly, I was like thinking about it. And I was like, you know, I, uh, no, I'm, I'm not about that life. Just, just thinking about, you know, how something that you would think is small. Uh, uh nope. The way I saw it was I have placed enough restrictions on myself for my majority of my life that I don't want to have any more. So that was the second reason. The third reason was, and I actually called my brother and I told him that I was thinking about getting it because I needed somebody else's perspective on it other than my mom's, which she was just pushing for it and pushing for it. And, you know, it was out of love, but at the same time, I was kind of like, eh. So I did talk to my brother about it and he is actually, he's going to be graduating from college and he will be an RN. So of course I trust his opinion and he's my favorite person. So he was the one that told me, you know, gastric bypass should be a last resort for you. You should exhaust every other option that you have and, you know, address your binge eating disorder first. So that brings me to my next point, which has been eating disorder recovery. And honestly, that is a large reason why I was MIA for a majority of this year here on YouTube. A lot of it was also because I was buying my condo <laughs> and I was constantly on the hunt. But I will admit Eating disorder recovery has thrown me a curveball and I just, I don't even know like how I've come this far. I don't even really know where I'm at right now, like if I'm on the right path still, but I've been in recovery since August 3rd and that was when I first started and I've been seeing a dietitian every two weeks. I see my therapist every two weeks and they alternate. So they also communicate with each other so that, you know, they know what's going on as well. And it's definitely been a journey. I will say that. I don't really know if, whew, I don't really know if it's like the right journey, but I do think that I need more help. And I will talk more about this in a separate video if you guys want. But it's just been, <laughs> it's been a whirlwind. The thing I struggle the most with is taking care of myself. And I think that also tied into making sure that I got enough to eat, which usually that never happened because if I was stressed, which I was 24 seven at my last job, I would eat something when I was at home, go a majority of my day at work without eating, probably eat something, you know, just a little bit so I wouldn't pass out. And then when I would get home, I would binge. So going from that type of a pattern to eating six times a day has been extremely difficult for me. And I still really struggle with keeping up with it on the weekends, but I... I'm still keeping up with it. I'm still trying to just, you know, keep everything together. The thing I'm struggling with more so now is eating when I get home from work. So I'm trying not to do that, but baby steps, baby steps. So anyways, now let's get into goals for 2021. So I have been neglecting my planners all this year. Since the pandemic hit pretty much, I've been neglecting them. And maybe it's just because I was trying to deal with the fact that I literally couldn't go anywhere except to work at the grocery store. But for whatever reason, my planner situation just fell off the face of the earth. And I literally have not been using one since like October at this point. So that is very unprecedented for me. But in the new year, I do really want to revamp my planner and not necessarily get new inserts, but just kind of get back into it, get back into the swing of things, which kind of brings me to my next goal, which is time management. So now that 
I am in recovery from my eating disorder. I spend a lot of my time, if it seems like, eating food, preparing food, making sure I have enough food packed, you know, for when I go to work. And it just, it seems like there's never enough hours in the day because I'm also trying to make sure that I'm not sleep deprived and, you know, that I'm working out. I'm basically trying to put myself first and really put my health first and trying to learn how to, you know, let other things kind of slide, like taking care of my condo, doing dishes. You kind of get where I'm going with this. And I'm trying to find like the balance. So I want to be better at time management so that I can kind of hit all of those goals. The next thing is I want to be at a more advanced stage in my recovery. So I don't really know what that means per se, but right now I can tell you that I don't want to be you know, eating at night. And I want to be consistent with my nutrition plan throughout the entire week, not just Monday to Friday when I'm at work. So I also want to make eating more of a priority because like I said, I do still have days where it's just all over the place. So that is the one thing that I would really, really love, even though you know, I don't know what it's going to look like in a few months, but still. The next thing is I just want to do some more home improvements. You know, I need to paint some of my rooms a little bit more. I probably should repaint my bedroom and my bathroom because my bathroom especially, I had to have my dad fix the drywall for me. So, you know. Um, also need to repaint my front door, <laughs> which I haven't done. And I moved in here September 11th. So that's a thing. All right. I also want to keep up with YouTube and TikTok. So more so YouTube because TikTok, I post what I eat in a day videos every single day, but I do really want to keep up with you guys a lot more. I know I say that every year and then I fall off the face of the earth and then I'm like, oh, hey guys, sorry, I've been MIA. Like, I, I just want to be more consistent with it because I feel bad that you guys are like waiting around for a video or you're excited for a video and then it just never comes. I know exactly how that feels and it's, it's annoying. So I do apologize for that. But that does bring me to my next point which is I would like to say thank you to all of you guys who follow me on here because <laughs> I'm not going to lie. A lot of the times I feel like nobody watches my videos, but I know that there are, you know, a handful of you at least who do watch them religiously. And I do really appreciate that, you know, and the fact that you're so willing to have me share my life with you. It's, Honestly, I really appreciate that. And I'm so thankful for you guys. So, oh, I'm going to cry. Woo, I'm going to cry. But, all right, we're going to choke down those tears. Uh, but, again, just thank you guys for always being so supportive and understanding. I really can't say that enough. But thank you guys so much. And, oh... I pray that 2021 is like a million times better than 2020. It has to be because at this point, I don't think that there is a human on this planet that has enough hope left in them to go through another year that was this much of a dumpster fire. So I don't know. Maybe there is somebody, maybe if like Mother Teresa was still alive, but or maybe the Pope does. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. I don't know these things. But <laughs> I do have to admit, oh, I forgot one resolution. I want to be better with reading my Bible. Now, I did mention this to you guys last year. I did try going to church. I will probably never set foot inside of a church again, unless it's to go back to my favorite church in Poland. But I do want to be better 
about reading it because that fell off the face of the earth in about October of last year. I tried to keep up with it this year, but it's just been trash. So this is kind of my motivation. I got a new cross for Christmas. I asked for it from my mom and I had to get 14 karat white gold because I don't know if you can see this, but I have this really weird rash and it only pops up if I wear silver. So I don't know, maybe I'm dying. Not really sure. But my mom did say that when she had me, like she couldn't wear silver anymore. So I think that's what's happening to me. My hormones are definitely changing. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great New Year's. And I hope you have your goals and your planners lined up for 2021. I'm getting super excited because, you know, it's like, even though you're in the same body, it just, it feels like you get a new life. You know what I mean? So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to y'all next year. Bye guys.